Hi, everybody. This is Julian from AWS. Welcome to episode 17 of my podcast. I hope you're still doing okay in those strange times. I hope you're safe wherever you are. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified of future videos. This week, uh, lots of uh, exciting AWS news on high-level services, SageMaker, and PyTorch. So let's not wait and let's get started. As usual, let's start with the high-level services. And uh, the big news is the general availability of Amazon Augmented AI. Amazon Augmented AI was launched in preview at reInvent, and now everyone can use it. So what is this service? Well, this service lets you build uh, review workflows for recognition, text tract, or a custom workflow. So basically, it's the way to uh, have a human in a loop uh, in order to examine predictions that have a low confidence score. Okay, um, so this is what it looks like in the console. You'll find it in the in the SageMaker console, and it, it's a little bit similar to SageMaker Ground Truth. So first, you need to create a review workforce, and this could be a mechanical Turk, a private workforce, or a vendor workforce. Okay. And then you create a workflow. And uh, as mentioned, the workflow can be text tract, recognition, or a custom workflow. So the way this works is uh, you're pushing data to, uh, let's say, text tract. And if the confidence score for the, the text tract prediction is uh, below a certain threshold that you define, then the, um, the sample is sent for a human review to your workforce. And so, in a way, you get the best of both worlds. You can automate prediction with a high-level service or with a, a custom workflow. And, uh, and you can make sure that low-confidence scores are reviewed by humans, right? And, uh, and that's useful because no machine learning model will ever get to 200% uh, accuracy. So this is a really cool service, and, uh, and you should definitely try it out. What else do we have? Uh, oh yeah, one of my favorite services. So Transcribe Medical um, now supports custom vocabulary, as you know by now, I'm sure. Transcribe Medical is a, a speech-to-text service specialized for medical vocabulary. So um, it works exactly the same as as uh, Transcribe for for custom vocabulary. So basically, you just create a text file with um, uh, words, and uh, and you pass that to to Transcribe. Just upload it with that create vocabulary file, and um, and this is how Transcribe Medical will transcribe your your custom words. So if you have um, words or specific vocabulary that um, needs to be transcribed exactly right, you know maybe drug names, maybe maybe something like that, then you can use custom vocabulary, right? So that's a good way to again improve. The accuracy of uh, of your transcriptions, so that's pretty nice. Uh, moving on to translate, okay, regional expansion. So uh, translate batch translation is now available in Europe, London. So good news, I guess, for uh, UK and Ireland customers. What else do we have? Uh, Lex available again in London, Frankfurt, Asia Pacific. So um, Lex is the the chatbot service. So now you can use it in traditional regions. Always good to know. You know, it's it just uh, cuts on on latency and and if you have data in those regions, of course, it's always easier to work with uh, with a local uh, version of the service. And I guess the really big news is the general availability of uh, SageMaker notebooks, which is the notebook element in uh, SageMaker Studio, and also. SageMaker Studio is now available in additional regions, which uh, is uh, probably the number one question I was getting these days. When do we get SageMaker Studio outside of uh, USC2? Well, that's it. So, um, so now you can use Studio, uh, of course, still in Ohio, in US East 1, North Virginia, US West 2, Oregon, and Europe. Yeah. So here's a SageMaker Studio instance that I created in EU West 1 and well you know it looks the same um, uh, and uh, there are a few a few extra things 
Uh, so for example, if I open this notebook here, um, this uh, collaboration feature uh, is now uh, is now available. Uh, it's one of the things we discussed at reInvent, the ability to uh, take um, notebook snapshots and share them. So uh, this is now actually uh, available. And so we also have different compute environments. Uh, during the preview, uh, you could only use the smallest compute environment and now uh, you can actually use different ones, uh, CPU and GPU. So, um, and I think if I, yeah, if I look at the full list, you know, we can see a long list of compute environments that are available. So that's pretty good. So you can find the, uh, you can find the exact environment that works for you. And, uh, and I'm quite sure there are a few more uh, bells and whistles that uh, I haven't caught yet. But anyway, that's, that's really good news. Um, so Notebooks is now GA and more stable, I should say. And, uh, and uh, it's available in three additional regions. So now if you've never tried SageMaker Studio, the time is right, I think. It's a good time to do it. And, um, and of course, you'll find tons of videos on my YouTube channel on uh, how to do that. Okay, let's keep going. Um, this is another uh, SageMaker announcement. I think it's pretty important. So um, you can now use Inferentia on um, SageMaker and uh, Inf1 instances. So let me explain. Inferentia is a custom chip that was built by AWS to provide uh, high throughput, low cost inference for customers who really, really need to scale their, um, their prediction infrastructure. Uh, beyond what's possible with uh, uh, GPU instances. And so that inferential chip is, uh, is available in uh, INF1 instances, which are EC2 instances, okay? Um, and we've built a specific SDK that lets you compile uh, your uh, deep learning models for uh, INF1 instances and, and deploy them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but so far, you, you had to do this on EC2 and, um, and you had to pretty much build uh, the, the, the compilation and the deployment pipeline yourself. And uh, well, now it's available in SageMaker and uh, well, actually I wrote the blog post for it. So I'll include the link uh, in the description. And it is a super, super simple integration. So you can see it here. And, uh, and the only thing you have to do is compile the model that you trained and you compile it with SageMaker Neo, which uh, is a pre-existing capability um, uh, that's uh, designed to compile models for specific hardware architectures. And so now, as you can see here, INF1 is one of those target architectures. So you just use that Neo API to compile the model and then you just call deploy. Okay, and of course the instance type is going to be an inf1 instance. So this is this is really as simple as it gets. And uh, again, this is one of the reasons why I, I like SageMaker so much, um, because doing this on EC2 is a much more involved process. And here it's literally two lines of code, and you deploy a hardware optimized model on a, on a really really fast custom chip. So this is a cool, a really cool feature. So you can check out the blog post. And uh, when it comes to frameworks, uh, we have uh, also a pretty big announcement. So we worked with uh, Facebook on uh, a model server for PyTorch. And this is called TorchServe, okay? which, uh, which is really the equivalent of, uh, I would say, TensorFlow serving for TensorFlow. And uh, this was a, a pretty big gap uh, for PyTorch users. PyTorch is really great for experimentation. Uh, you know, it is uh, really flexible, but you know, when it comes to deploying models, it was missing uh, a production grade uh, model server to, uh, to serve predictions at scale. And well, this gap is now, uh, is now filled by TorchServe. And again, I wrote a blog post for this and um, you, can, you can go and, uh, and read all about it. It's, it's really, really easy to, uh, to install. Of course, it is open source, so you can go and uh, and grab it from that repository here. And uh, it supports uh, single model, multi-model loading. Um, it supports uh, HTTPS. Uh, it, has, uh, it has monitoring capabilities, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it, it has all the, all the 
uh, production features that you would expect from uh, from a model server. So again, really, really good news because uh, I think this was a, a strong ask from the PyTorch community, and uh, you know I'm really happy AWS uh, worked on this and contributed uh, the code um, for for this project. So there you go, you can read all about it. All, all right. right, that's it for this week. I hope you learned a few things. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified of future videos. And uh, I'll see you soon with more news. Until then, long live the zombie apocalypse and keep rocking. <laughs>